We want to welcome all of His Glory Nation from east to west to north to south as we bring you a brand new teaching. Tonight we will be in Ecclesiastes uh, by Solomon, one of the great and wisdoms of knowledge that the Lord gave upon uh, Solomon, uh, David's son that took over the throne from, for, from King David. God gave him uh, an, an enormous wisdom and knowledge, but this wisdom and the knowledge was of the world. And he had to go through his life and uh, not listen to the wisdom and knowledge of the Lord and come back in the latter days. So the Ecclesiastes was written, some scholars believe, around 935 B.C. This is the latter part of Solomon's life after he's gone through the trials and tribulations of life and he gets it right at the end. And it's how we finish is what's important. It's not how we start because he started out as a young, young boy. Uh, we don't know quite how old he was, but he was young, as the scripture will tell us, uh, as taking over king for, from his uh, father David. And uh, the, the scripture tells us that he was the most wise and uh, had more wisdom than anybody ever. But he didn't follow the word of the Lord. He was, resp- he, he was told uh, in the Torah <clears throat> to read the Torah daily uh, so it would go well with him. He did not. He was told to have one wife. He did not. He had over 700 wives and concubines. He was told not to bring up horses from Egypt. He did not. And that was strike three. As you say in baseball, strike three and you're out. And he brought in the pagan women and they were worshiping foreign gods. And uh, he had to get it right in the end. And he's talking about this as vanity. Everything we go through in life is vanity. If it's not for the Lord, it's vain. It's for the world. It's for not the glory of God. So what he's going to be talking about is wisdom and knowledge of the world and your PhDs instead of the wisdom and knowledge that comes through the Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus Christ. With that said, as we always do, we pray that the Holy Spirit will come down from east to west to north to south to be the true teacher in the living word of God, which is our Savior, Christ the Lord. Okay, so let's get into the first chapter of Ecclesiastes, and we'll tell you what it means in the, in the Hebrew too, because your uh, English will say that he's a preacher. Uh, the word in Hebrew means more of a public speaker. So a king was a public speaker. Uh, you didn't have press releases back then. The king, king would gather up in front of all the people and speak. And so he great, great crowds. When the c- king spoke, people listened. The words of the preacher should be more the words of the public speaker. The son of David, the king in Jerusalem. The va- vanity of vanity, says the preacher. Vanity of vanity is all vanity. He's saying it's all vain. Everything I went through, all the wisdom... All the knowledge, all the riches, all the glory for me, all the wives being disobedient to God's precepts and commandments. It, went, it didn't go well for me. And I had to turn it around. It's vain. There's nothing there. It, it goes through your, your hands. It's gone. What profit has a man from all his labor if he toils under the sun? What is the profit? It's only in our riches in, King, King, uh, uh, riches in Christ Jesus. What does it profit you if you get, gather the whole world, but you lose your soul? Uh, Solomon is telling us a very valuable lesson about how short life is and what we're here to do. One generation passes away, another generation has come. There's an old movie that says, they come and they go, Hobbes, they come and they go. And that's exactly what happens in life. They come and they go from generation passes by. You know, when we look at our great-great-grandfathers and grandparents, they're out of our mind. We forget. Not out of their mind and out of their mind mentally, but we, we forget things pass, that things short. It's a passing flower. And another generation comes, but the earth abides forever. The people fade, the grass grows and fades, the flowers fade, but the earth is here forever. It's only what we do with our heart and our soul that matters that establishes our eternal life. As Solomon will we'll see later on, he will, he will wrap it up in a summarization to say, fear the Lord. Because everything else is vain. The sun also rises and the sun goes down. Every day the sun rises and the sun goes down, day after day. And hastens to the place where it arose. God put it in place. As we told you in the book of Yasser, God has a place for every single thing. Everything is absolutely detailed. Hasten means put in the exact place by his precepts and his commandments. And everything is absolutely perfect in how he'll show the seas and the rivers run into the seas, but nothing overflows. God is the, the king of glory. The wind comes towards the south and turns around to the north. The wind whirls around continually. Come again on its circuit. Everything is done in a circuit. God does everything in the perfection. His angels in charge of all these things as we learn in the book of Yasser. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. 
to the place for which the rivers come, there they, there they return again. Yes, we have floods that overcome every now and then, but the, just the general purpose of the Lord, everything is perfect. You know, there's scientists who will tell you that there's over 60 elements on the science table that if they were just a tad off, we could not even exist on the earth. That's how perfect God is of all the elements of the earth to have everything in perfection, just to live, just to breathe, just to be able to establish life on earth. And he gives us eternal life. That's why we're here. All things are full of labor. Man cannot express it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor is the ear filled with hearing. We don't get enough. We're never, we're not satisfied. We, we can't hear enough. We can't see enough. We want more, 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 more. And it's all vain because we're chasing the world as Solomon's telling us. Instead of having that love, joy, peace, hope, the most high as Solomon will tell us at the end of Ecclesiastes. That which has is, is been is what will be. That which is done is what, what will be done. And there is nothing new under the sun. What's he talking about? What, we said, well, wait, we came back from a long time ago. You know, we, we came from cavemen and we're here. There's a lot of new stuff under the sun. We have iPads and iPhones. Well, we're not so sure about that. Uh, there's been many scholars that would say that in the Garden of Eden, they lived in a 10-dimension reality. We can see by the pyramids that there was something supernatural about the pyramids, that, that they had high technology. And what Solomon is telling us, more of a spiritual, nothing's new under the sun. You might have something new that you think it's creative, but the knowledge of the Lord is nothing new. He's been here before time, and he will be here because he's, he is the Alpha, the Omega. He is the I am that I am. And there's nothing which is done will, that will be done. What God intended from Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden will come full circle when our Messiah, Jesus Christ, comes down in the Davidic covenant for a thousand years, rescues us as in our glorified bodies and in the white throne judgment. And we enter in and we tabernacle with the Lord in a multidimensionality like it was back in the Garden of Eden. So there's truly nothing new under the sun. There might be something new and flashy from the world perspective, but the spirit of the Lord and the wisdom and knowledge of your soul is he has always been there. He's always been for his people. As soon as life was created, when he breathed it into Adam, when he talked in the stars into existence, he talked into the earth, he was there and he walked with Adam in the garden. And he's walking with us today as long as we open our heart and say, Lord, I'm here. Take me, take me. I can't do it myself. So there's truly nothing new under the sun. Nothing changes. It's only the condition of our heart. As Solomon's heart changed. He got it right at the end. Is there anything which it may be said, see, this is new. There's nothing new. Matter of fact, there was a, this hasn't been proven yet, but there was a, uh, a archaeologist uh, about a year ago that I saw that they found uh, in Egypt a, uh, a picture of what looked like an iPhone from thousands of years ago. And some people say, well, they had iPhones back. We don't know. We know that there was the supernatural. We knew they lived in different dimensionalities. We know through Einstein's theory of relativity that time is a finite property. We don't, the dimensionalities can change. We are now just getting into technology to say that we live in it. All scientists believe we live in a 10-dimension reality. God is outside of dimensionality in whole. Some scientists say that we live in a 20-dimension reality. That means teleporting. That means walking through physical walls, things that we would look at 100 years ago or even 20 years ago and say it's impossible to do. Now science has proven the Bible to be true. As Solomon says, there's truly, really new, nothing new under the sun. The love of God has been here from Genesis 1 all the way to Revelation 22. Nothing new under the sun except for his love. That's all that matters. Everything else is vain. There's no remembrance of the former things. We forget. They go away. We forget what we had for breakfast yesterday. Nor will they have any remembrance of things that are to come by those who will come after. It changes. It moves on. They go on. We won't, we, our people will forget about us a hundred years from now. They'll say, oh, who they? yeah, I guess he's a part of my family, but I never heard of him. Nothing new under the sun. But when we love the Lord Jesus Christ and we enter into that love relationship with him, everything will be for eternity. We'll live in his multidimensionality in the kingdom of heaven forever in love, joy, peace, hope. And every day will be glory because time, we're outside of time. It'll be glory, glory, glory. I, the preacher or the public speaker, was king over Israel and Jerusalem, the most powerful man and the most wisdom and the richest man that ever lived, Solomon, that God gave him the conditional, un uh, conditional covenant that if you obey my words, that you, there'll be kings from you forever. And he didn't obey. We said in the Torah, he, he didn't obey three of God's commandments. 
And look what happens when even the wisest man, the richest man in the world, does not obey God's precepts and commandments. It goes bad. He realizes, though, it's vain. God woke him up. And he was his heart. And here he's going to talk about his heart in verse 13. And I set my heart to seek and search out wisdom by concerning all that is done under heaven and the burdensome task that Elohim has given to the sons of man by which they may be exercised. My heart. It's a heart relationship. It's not knowledge of the wisdom. We can only get there with love of the heart. I've seen all the works that are done under the sun and indeed all is vanity. It's like grasping at wind, Solomon says. Can you catch the wind? That's what vanity is like this. It comes and it goes. We might have our new face or a new, new hat, new clothes. It, it wears out new house, new, new car. It all wears out. It's all vain. Only thing that matters is the condition of our heart. Do we love the Lord Jesus Christ with all our heart and our soul and our mind? The wisest man ever is now telling us, I got it wrong. It's not of the world. Listen to me. I'm the son of David, the beloved of God's eye. I didn't listen to my father. I went around in the world and I got hoodwinked. But now I'm telling you what it's all about. It's about love the Lord with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. What is crooked cannot be made straight. If you're designed to be crooked, your heart is incurably wicked. It cannot be made straight. And what is lacking cannot be numbered. I commune with my heart saying, Look, I have attained greatness and have gained more wisdom than all who were before me in Jerusalem. And he did. God gave him wisdom over anyone, even including David. My heart has understood great wisdom and knowledge, but the wisdom, the true wisdom and the knowledge are the two of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. And that the only important wisdom and knowledge of the world is the, the, the wisdom and knowledge of the Holy Spirit that gives us, that God the Father, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit is in us. And he who is in us is stronger than he who is in the world, and that's what life's all about. Everything else is a passing flower. Everything else is vain. Vanity of vanities, as Solomon says. I set my heart to know wisdom and no madness and folly. I set my heart on the wrong things. I set it to no madness and folly of the world instead of the wisdom that God, who put God in position anyway? Who put Solomon there? You remember our teaching in, in Kings that, uh, that, that Solomon's brother tried to, uh, through his other mother, tried to get the, the kingdom away from Solomon. That was in our teaching in Samuel. And uh, it was by the grace of God that God had a plan and God put Solomon on there. God gave him the wisdom and the knowledge to test him, to see what would he do. Would you turn to your great wisdom and riches and women of the world? Or would you turn to me with your heart, your soul, and your mind to know what truth is? I set you on the throne, Solomon, because of your, your, beloved, or your beloved father, David, the everlasting covenant, that there will be a king in the line for David forever. And God means what he says and says what he means. And that's where the Christ, the Messiah, the King of Judah, the Lion of the tribe of Judah will come in and fulfill that. So knowing wisdom and madness was a folly. I perceived that also is grasping at the wind. Again, it's grasping at the wind, going for the wisdom and knowledge of the world. What good does it mean if you, you, you sacrifice your soul for the riches of the world? What is just vain? It's grasping at the wind because it's gone. It's gone. For in much wisdom is much grief. The wisdom of mind, there's much grief, but the wisdom of the heart and the soul of Jesus Christ, he takes your yoke away, and that's the fruit of the Spirit, joy, peace, hope, and love, knowing he's got it. No matter what life looks like, he's got it. The more wisdom and knowledge of the world, the more grief you have, the more cars you have, the more houses you have, the more grief, 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 the more intelligent you are, the more you overthink things, the more your anxiety. Not once does the Bible say, get anxious about it. Not once does the Bible say, worry about it and it will get better. It says, no, release it to me. I am the living God and I give my beloved son, Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, to take away that burden, to make your yoke light. For much as wisdom is much grief, and he who increases knowledge increases sorrow. The more knowledge, you see the most intellectual people, the PhDs of the world, are the most whacked out people on the face of the earth. Not all of them, but more of them because they think they're smarter than everybody else. Look at me. Look at, my, look at my PhD in the back here. I am more intelligent than you. And that's the opposite of what God wants us to be in humility. Humility is that we love and build each other up, not I'm smarter than you. And when you think you're smarter than somebody else, it's me, me, me. It's vain. It's vanity. It's instead of the love of God. So he wants to meet us here right at the cross. The cross is the Holy of Holies where Jesus wants to meet you. 
I, we pray that Ecclesiastes uh, chapter 1 has been a blessing to you. And may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless you today and always. God bless you.